I am so excited about this one. We're going to solve every single lesson, every single sermon, and every single lecture in the history of the universe. Well, by divine ordinance, they all add to the same thing. 84, 84, 84. Look at the perfect parallelism between lesson and sermon. In six letters apiece, you've got a pair of letters, <clears throat> three pairs of letters that make equivalent numbers. 24 in red, 27 in blue, and then 33 in green. In lecture, you get another triple of, uh, another three teams that make 24, 30, 30 to add to 84. So I've already highlighted it and colored it. Um, lesson equals sermon. So lesson, the LO, or let's go in order of 24, 27. So ES equals 24, LO equals 27, three points higher, and then SN equals 33. Three teams to divide by three equaling 84. In sermon, the SE equals 24 again, same as we had in lesson. Uh, the uh, MN this time, okay, totally different letters from the LO up here, make 27 in the middle, and then the RO, which both divide by three, um, make the 33 on top. Three teams to divide by three, equaling those three teams in lesson, add to 84 perfectly. And then in lecture, you get the teams 24, 30, 30. So this, the 27 team popped up three, the 33 team came down three. Uh, team red is CU, 24. Team blue is LR, 30. And then the three letters that don't divide by three knit together to make 30. Team green to make 84. <laughs> wow. We've just solved every single lesson, every single sermon, and every single lecture in the history of the universe. That is a very expensive gem. And the current date and time for historic purposes it's 3.08 a.m. on May 15th, 2015, okay? And uh, I will pop the camera off for you to record that. Just so you can see in the name of love. Here's a nice 3.09, lovely 3 fest for you. Okay, back to the uh, party here. Back to the red zone. Come on, get centered there. That's fine. Um, so let's count the number of uh, strokes to carve these words now. <clears throat> okay. These guys are in the number of letters as well. This is six letters, six letters, seven letters. But let's count the, uh, the uh, number of strokes here. Uh, six, nine, ooh, twelve for lesson. Lovely, divides by three. How many for sermon? Uh, nine. 12, 15, 16, okay, <laughs> just checking it out, lecture is uh, 6, 9, 10, 13, plus 4, 17, interesting, 17, 16, 12, so not as cool, Not as cool, certainly, as the, um, I mean, if you were to add up all these three words, you know, put these three together, <laughs> then yes, the number of strokes for this week. But, um, of course, all these, these words chain link with all sorts of other words in the English language to make beautiful multiples of three, you know, in the strokes and letters and all that stuff, okay? But the obvious thing <laughs> is that they all equal 84. This is so amazing. But... After I did this, I really felt the Holy Ghost say to me, wait till you see lecture. So I was shocked enough at the total parallelism between lesson and sermon, equaling the same number with the same three teams, 24, 27, 33, in three pairs of letters. And then as I was just finishing this off, I felt the Holy Ghost prompt me, wait till you see the word lecture. <laughs> and we do the math on lecture, and lo and behold, it also equals 84. <laughs> Lesson equals 84, sermon equals 84, lecture equals 84. That is mind-blowing. And I had a divine appointment. You can watch these videos I recorded earlier where I went to Trinity Western University's Accepted Student Fiesta um, and uh, they had two main unique carnival games. The one was ladder golf, L-A-D-D-E-R golf where you throw three items on a three-runged three ladder, and it's so loaded with threes, uh, which equals 84. And pig racing. 
with six tracks and two pairs of threes painted according to the six colors of the rainbow and pig racing equals 84 and I was marveling at that, it was so obvious from there and now here I see these famous three words from education no less that all equal 84 so I went to that fiesta and they had ladder golf and pig racing 84, 84 and uh, now I'm seeing lesson, sermon, lecture 84, 84, 84 that's so expensive. I mean, just consider how many sermons have been preached in the history of the universe and will be preached. Consider how many lessons have been given. Like, this is not just teaching lessons. This is obviously music lessons, sports lessons, father-son, father-daughter, mother-son, mother-daughter lessons. Like, in anything you want to give the lesson on. <laughs> okay, let me teach you a lesson. As they say, it's just like... What do you want to learn? There's a lot of things you've got to learn. <laughs> okay, lesson. <laughs> and then a lecture is now getting more official sounding, education in particular, um, as far as scholarship goes, 84. That, this is mind-blowing. I mean, this is like an educator's dream combo. <laughs> by the way, the word teacher equals 60, divides by 12, just like all of these ones, 84. What was educator again? I know the root of educate is 54. Uh, oh my goodness, so educator is um, 33 points higher than the root, which is love, 54, is uh, 87. Educator equals truth, um, and that is three points higher than all these 84. So let's just write that down so the writing is on the wall. Educator equals 87, three points higher than all these 84s. And then truth equals 87. Okay. <laughs> so, the obvious parallelism between an educator, the truth, lesson, sermon, and lecture cannot be denied for the glory of the triune God. God is the source of all wisdom and knowledge. Okay. There is no wisdom apart from God. Okay. Because if you live a life apart from God, you go to hell. That is the definition of non-wisdom. That is the definition of foolishness. The definition of wisdom is bringing God pleasure. <laughs> okay, Doing that which pleases God, and that will last forever. Jesus told us what to do <laughs> to be wise. He says you're coming home to heaven. And while you're there on earth, you get to do what I tell you to do that's both the best for you then, right now, and it's the best for all eternity. Okay? So, education without God is hell. It's hell. It's meaningless. It's worthless. It's frustrating. It's unsatisfying. It doesn't answer anyone's questions. It doesn't satisfy our longings. It doesn't satisfy our needs for understanding of who we are, what this universe is, what the language is that we speak, what the words, who it's all for. It's meaningless. But ah, in God are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In Christ are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And here is a big one. This is so big for education. By the way, the word school equals 72, which divides by 12. Okay, university equals love plus love plus love, like on and on and on. Um, and then like the root of college, C-O-L-L-E-G, and so colleges and college and college, that is like 36 plus 18, that's love. So let's get that on the board. So like the root of, I'm going to make some, some room here, okay, because if you take the glory for the root, you take the glory for the whole tree, the root of educate is love. 54 exactly. Okay? And then um, so that educator divides by three, educations divides by three, educating, the act of present tense divides by three, educateth, which is my favorite. The ETH ending, 33 in three letters, nine strokes. I educateth. <laughs> Very awesome. Okay, but the root equals love, and then same with the root of college. Okay. equals the same thing. 12 plus 12 plus 12, 36 plus 18, love. Okay, Because then you can have the collegiate 
athletics program or the collegiate tournament, the collegiate conglomerate, or you can have colleges, or you can say, I collegeth. <laughs> we established, you know, I, I was colleged at Columbia Bible College. <laughs> whatever. I am colleging. Whatever. <laughs> That's the root right there. Love. Okay. So, it's obvious. In six letters, the root of college is love. In six letters, the root of education is love. Okay. This starts with nine in two letters. This is three. This is double nine. You know, three plus fifteen, eighteen. And then these letters both divide by three. You can even see parallelism in the pairs of letters between educate and college. E D nine. The U and the C both divide by three. The A and the T knit together to make twenty-one. C and E, C and O, double nine. The two L's divide by three, just like the C and O. The E and the G knit together. You can even knit them together vertically. T and G, perfect cube of three. A and E, da -da -da -da. these letters all divide by three. It's like you can, you can totally knit together. Education and college perfectly for threes. <laughs> Go to college. Why? So you can get an education. <laughs> I'm going to college. Well, I hope you learn something. <laughs> Rather than just playing sports the whole time. <laughs> I hope you learn something about God. <laughs> as in all of this material, and what this universe is, because that's wisdom. Because if you just uh, party and be selfish in this life, that's not wisdom. Because you live forever, and you have an opportunity to lay up treasure in heaven right now. that lasts forever. That's wisdom. Read the words of Jesus. He tells you what to do, if you want to be wise. Okay, for eternity. And amazingly, but not surprisingly, it's actually the most satisfying life right now. It's the most satisfying, it's the most pleasurable, it's the most blessed. A life rich in love. Okay? And truth. So, and knowledge. Man, I am just, whew, I can tell this is the hot spot. I can tell this is the hot spot for mankind. It's the hot spot for myself because this is all about education. This is all about what comes into people's minds. This is all about the human brain and people's understanding of this universe in which man lives. Who is it for? Why are we here? Well, it's for the Trinity. <laughs> and we've just proven it mathematically. And grade one children can do the math. Who is the Trinity? God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Eternal God, who made you and all things in the world and the universe. Okay? Jesus told us what to do to please God. Jesus is God. He is the second member of the Trinity. Okay? The two greatest commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And secondly, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Well, this needs to be taught and believed in our schools. But then secondly, folks, there's a lot more. <laughs> Look at how pleasurable this is. This is a treasure hunt. Look at how pleasurable this is upon the mind to see this beauty and this perfection in three words that are so famous in education it's not even funny. A sermon has traditionally been reserved for the church and cathedrals and pastors and preachers and evangelists. A lesson <laughs> applies to all walks of life. A mother teaching her child to walk, that's a lesson. Someone learning piano, that's a lesson. Someone going to an art class, a craft class, a dance class, a dance lesson. Dance divides by three, and on a lesson, a lesson, a lesson. YouTube videos that share how to do things, a lesson, how to fix a car. Let's give you a lesson, a driver's lesson. It's like a bike riding lesson. Someone had to teach you how to ride your bike. That was a lesson. You learned from your parents. You had to learn how to talk. That was a lesson. You had to learn how to spell English. That was a lesson. You had to learn how to do math. That was a lesson. You had to learn how to eat. That was a lesson. You had to learn how to wipe your rear end. That was a lesson. You had to learn how to clean up after yourself. That was a lesson. You had to learn how to get dressed. That was a lesson. <laughs> okay. You had to learn how to pay what you pay and respond to what you respond to and 
treat people with kindness and respect less and less and less. Okay, so I mean that's a, and then lecture seems to me. I mean again that applies to everything. In my opinion, father the father son and father daughter relationship is the most important educational and emotional relationship for a person's upbringing. That is my strong belief that the father relationship is extra important. Okay. A lecture, but a lecture in schools, a lecture anywhere, God, most of all, will give you a lecture. God gives Job a lecture, okay? <laughs> he lives and he speaks. Um, that's amazing. A lecture, a lesson, a sermon. You see how important this is? You see how critical this is. So, can you imagine if everyone on planet Earth saw these things and understood these things and got them all and believed the Bible word for word and we all had a real personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ and we were all hearing His personal voice daily as He walks with us and talks with us and tells us what to do each day and a lesson, a sermon, a lecture. It's all about what's up here. Why do people do what they do? Because they believe what they believe. Why do people do what they do? Because they have certain things up here that make them do what they do. That's why it's so critical. Education, proper education in Christ Jesus is the most important thing on the planet. There's one thing I really want to preach on. It has nothing, it has nothing to do with your own strength or trying to be a good person. No, there is supernatural, spiritual blessing upon the redeemed. When you confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you become blessed as a result of your confession of faith in Christ Jesus that has saved you from sin. And now the wrath of God is removed off of your life and the blessing and the favor of God is upon your life. You are a son or a daughter of God. And you are now blessed because of your faith. Because of your faith in Christ Jesus, because of what he did on the cross and what you have confessed about him, that he is God. Okay? It is a supernatural blessing. Okay? It's not something, it's, you're not blessed because of what you do. You're blessed because of your confession of Christ Jesus as Lord. Okay? And um, that's what the whole world needs. Countries that are impoverished are not impoverished. It's, it's a spiritual curse. It's that they're not blessed by God because of the lack of Confession of Christ Jesus. <laughs> okay? Um, so that needs to be taught. But consider how exciting this is. That uh, there's so much more to find. There's so much more to find. This, this is a huge finding. you got to be kidding me. Lesson equals sermon equals lecture. And look at lesson and sermon. Like, that is shocking. 24, 27, 33. I mean, these are the three heaviest hitters for the number three. 24 is triple eight. Three times eight. Jesus equals eight at eight in Greek and on We're breathing element eight oxygen to stay alive. Eight protons, eight neutrons, eight electrons, triple eight. 24, triple eight. 27, the perfect cube of three. Three times three times three. The first half of love and the second of love. And then 33 equals amen. Equals name, which is the most important part of anything. It's name. It also equals seed. <laughs> Everything begins as a seed, including you. You began as a single seed. It's like... These are three of the heaviest hitters for the number three, all on one team. What is God saying about the value of a lesson, the value of a sermon, the value of a lecture, which is 24, 30, 30, 30, good night, okay? It's like three, hello. What is God saying about the value and the importance of a lesson, a sermon, a lecture, and truth, and the educators of the world? Basically, it's the most important thing to raise. Because again, what comes up here at a young age affects everything. Everything for an entire life.
The devil knows this, and the devil wants to blind you. He wants to distract you. He wants your children to be distracted. He doesn't want your children to see this. He doesn't want humanity to see this. He doesn't want anyone to see this. The devil wants to hide truth from you. He wants to keep you blind to spiritual things and the true story. And he does not want your children to have a true Christ-centered education. He wants to be in control of them. He wants to keep them under the curse. The devil is called the father of lies. He hates truth. He is a liar. He hates truth more than anything else. There is nothing the devil hates more than truth. Which is why there is a war on for your children's education. And there's a war on for education. Okay? And the dumbest thing that ever happened in the history of Canada and the United States is removing the Bible from the schools. I repeat, that is the dumbest thing that has ever happened in the history of North America was removing the Bible from the public schools. The dumbest. There is no thing that has been dumber in all the universe than that. And so it's time for a repentance and it's time for a changing. By the way, the word repent means changing of mind. To change your mind in the Greek. Literally, a transforming of your mind. You've got to change your mind. Repent. Say, we were wrong. Yes, our thinking was wrong, our brains were wrong, our mind was wrong. Now I've seen the truth. I know that this story is for God. God is God. The Bible is truth. Okay? Oh, man. But look, and, and so what is this? Seeing see, see that this is all screaming out the number three. What should our lessons be focused on, and our sermons be focused on, and our lectures be focused on? The triune nature of God. The Trinity. God who is love. It's all about love. Do you see how the, the fact that God is screaming out the number three everywhere, day and night, is that he's screaming out love, love, love. Team, team, team. Friends, friends, friends. Care, care, care. And all those three words that I said in threes all divide by three. Team divides by three. Friends divides by three. Care divides by three. Love divides by three. That's the most important commandment to humanity. We are so swayed. We are so off. It's unbelievable how man strays from the greatest commandment. Love. Love. God is love. You can't have love without having more than one person. God is three persons. But you see how nuts he is about his triune nature and how nuts he is about love? By embedding the very words about education with this number three? It's three. That's the message. How many sermons? I'm preaching to the church at large here. How many sermons do you know of talk about the Trinity? Well... Apparently, that's the number one thing that a Sherman should be about, is the triune nature of God. And how many lessons do you know, as far as all lessons on earth are concerned, tell you about the Trinity, and tell you that it's all about love, and tell you that you should base your life upon love, and tell you that God is three persons, and who are they? You've got to get to know them. <laughs> God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Ghost. How many, how many lessons talk about that? How many lessons in our current public school system are telling kids about the triune God versus some piece of random junk that they don't actually need to satisfy their soul. Well, we've just proven mathematically that every lesson should contain total Trinity-centeredness. Total! The whole lesson should be about the Trinity, every single time. And in doing so, the whole lesson is about love, because God is love. And then when we understand that God is three persons in perfect harmony, that like, makes us look around at our neighbors, we're made in the image of God, and now we have children growing up with a mindset of teamwork and togetherness and pulling together and cooperation and love, then, uh, you know, uh, man, i got to get better grades than that guy over there so I get a better job than he is, and i got to make sure I beat him on the test, and i got to make sure I beat her in the exam so I can get a 
better and I gotta make sure I beat him and I gotta make sure I beat everyone and I'm just gonna be beating people my whole life and get what I want for myself as self. Totally warped! Totally wrong! Totally sinful! Totally in left field! Totally deceived! Totally lied to! Totally unhappy! Totally wretched! God is love. God is a team. And he's so nuts about that, that it's screaming at us in the word lesson and the word sermon. If, if you're listening to sermons that are all macho, individualistic, centric, find some real sermons. I would be so bold as just to listen to this one, see God's, you know, like, it's Trinity. And then the word lecture. How many lectures? in schools worldwide are talking about the triune God. Well, I've just proven mathematically that every lecture is supposed to start and finish and be filled in between with the triune God. Do the math yourself. What's the obvious conclusion you can make given the current state of things? Man is sinful. That is to say, he is wretchedly blind and wretchedly lost, apart from personal time and prayer, seeking the living God. The fact that we have thousands of schools all across this world that have no idea what we should teach in a lesson, no idea what we should teach in a sermon, no idea what we should teach in a lecture, they're certainly not teaching about the triune nature of God who is love. That tells me one thing, man is sinful by nature. That is to say, he is estranged from the knowledge of God, apart from personal, humble, seeking time. It's called repentance. No one comes to the knowledge of God without humility. No one comes closer to God without humility. It's obvious, a national repentance is in order. In the Bible, they wept, they fasted, they put on sackcloth from the king to the pauper. You cannot ignore the, the brutality of the current Canadian education system and the current American education system, just to pick two nations. It's terrible compared to what it could be. Terrible. Look at look at the word. Look at this beauty for the number three. Look at this total screaming, stunning beauty for the triune God. It's time for repentance, starting from the top down. We need to confess that we've been blind. We need to confess that we've been wrong. We need to confess that we've missed the mark. We need to confess that we've not been teaching the children about God. We don't even know about God ourselves, and that's the greatest tragedy of all. The Bible says those who seek God will find Him. It's a promise from God. If you seek me, you will find me. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Seek the truth, you will find it. Ask and you will receive. I, I can't speak enough about the importance of true, meaningful, satisfying education to the entire world. Because every baby was once a perfect, brand new baby. A clean hard drive, I like to say, is a metaphor that could be filled with anything. Their whole upbringing. Well, are you going to share this with them? Are you going to give them the truth? Are you going to feed them with this so they know the truth and be blessed in Christ Jesus and be a blessing to others? So, uh, we need repentance. That's all, that's all I can think at this point, is, is we need a massive, you know, bowing of our heads, humbling of our hearts, and crying out to God, saying, Oh God, we are so far from a properly educated generation. We are so far from giving our kids anything that is remotely meaningful in our public school system. We are so far 
from you. We are so far from the blessing we could be having. We are so far from the character and the nature and the understanding that all of us should have. Deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we will forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen that used to be prayed every single morning in every single school but now this needs to get taught because this is the glory of god um man you can tell there's a big problem it's called the truth war but folks, once you've seen the truth, like once you've seen this, like this is such glaring, glaring truth. It's like the light is blinding you. Literally, it's blowing away the lies. It's blowing away. Jesus said you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Literally, just chains falling off you. You're just like, well, done with that secular education. Done with that, those lies. Done with those cranky people. Done with those unhappy teachers that had no idea who God was and why they were here. It's called the truth war. This entire world is a war of words. It's a war of words. It's a war for people's minds. And Satan is involved. Okay? And, um... Satan wants the schools more than he wants anything else. He wants the education system more than he wants anything else in the nation. Because if he can get the kids in the education system and... It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. So, I'm praying for an awakening. I'm praying for revival. And um, that God's going to be glorified in all this. So, thank God that He's sovereign. And um, God would not be revealing these things to us if He didn't have an awesome plan for all of Canada, all of the United States, and uh, for the education of all of us in general. So, I'm worshipful. And I'm full of praise. Because God is sovereign. There's never a reason to complain. Okay? There is never a reason to complain. Only trust God. He is sovereign. He has a perfect plan. Nothing is impossible for Him. He's going to turn around everything, and He is revealing these things for awesome purposes and awesome reasons that are going to blow our minds, and He's going to bring about a great healing, just like He promised when He said, If my people who are called by my name will pray and seek my face, humble themselves, pray and seek my face, I will hear from heaven and heal their whole land. Okay, so I'm worshipful. Glory to God for these findings. Educator, truth, lesson, sermon, lecture. And, uh, wow. I just, I gotta stand back and just soak this in for a while because this is too overwhelming. All oh, man equals 33.